up to this talk. It's really good to see everybody here. A nice mix of cosplayers and non-cosplayers, which is always really awesome. So, just a little bit of background. My name is Jennifer Drick. It's lovely to see you all. Is everyone having a good time today? Have you enjoyed Bournemouth? Yeah. I think we do slightly. Actually, no, I won't do that. <laughs> so, basically, yeah, today I'm going to be talking to you about cosplay and me the media. Essentially, media representation within cosplay, which I'm sure is a topic that, you know, you might have thought about, maybe not, but hopefully you'll learn more by the end of this talk. So that's what I'm going to do for you today is cosplay and media. And do excuse me having to tap my laptop, I've done it on PowerPoint. So, a little bit about me, um, just a bit of background. I have been cosplaying since September of 2012, so that's about just shy of three years ago. It was actually kind of random how it started. Basically, a friend of mine, they were having a birthday thing, it was a cosplay-oriented thing, and they were like, oh yeah, you should go, you should go. I was like, okay, I have no idea what to do, I'm sure everyone's gonna look awesome, I'm gonna look terrible. And I got into it and I really enjoyed it, kept going on with that. So the reason I'm sort of talking to you about media is I'm actually a cosplay journalist. Um, I write for I'm With Geek. Um, they're a geek website and they talk about all sorts of geeky things. So there's like television, film, um, uh, games, comics, books. We even do bits about theatre sometimes. It's actually quite fun. Um, so I joined there in October of last year, so 2014. And they knew I was very into cosplay, went to cons like this um, and LFCC. And asked and said, well, do you want to do a cosplay article? I think as I was sort of pushing for that. So I've been doing that since the beginning of January, which you can find all of the articles on there on linewithgeek.com. Um, it's called Cosplay With Me, and I cover all sorts of things. So it's not like with some when they cover cosplay and they just do events. They don't look into, say, you know, anything more, really, or they occasionally interview people, but it's usually people who are like, you know, cosplay famous, as it were. Um, but I actually just cover everything. I'll cover events, I'll cover, I'll interview cosplayers big and small, you know, anybody who wants to talk, I'm happy to talk to them. Uh, cover, like, issues, that, you know, things like cosplay and mental health I've talked about, you know, uh, cosplays for all, all of that sort of stuff I have talked about. Um, but I've also done silly little things, so one of my favourite things to do is say 11 great costumes to, you know, characters to cosplay as from, like, George Lucas films for one thing, where I insist that people should try Howard the Duck. Which, you know, could, could be a slight thing. But one of the things that has become quite prominent now in my work is media commentary. This usually just comes up whenever a controversy comes up, usually, or uh, because at the end of the day, unfortunately, there have been incidents where cosplayers will be in the media, they'll be in the newspaper, they'll get photographed, but it's not quite in the way that I think most people would really like. Um, just to name a few controversies just in the past year, um, over here we've had a couple of newspapers I shan't name just to make sure they can't get me for libel later, obviously. <laughs> there have been a couple of newspapers, one that took some pictures from an agency, didn't even bother going to the event, made some very glaring mistakes about that event, and then put it out there and made some very, to put it nicely, some very objectionable language about the female cosplayers, about some of them making certain remarks and all the rest of it, which you know, it wasn't great, it caused a lot of controversy, I don't know if you heard about it, um, but yeah, it caused a lot of controversy, and the same again happened with LFCC, I'm not going to name any names again, but a very prominent newspaper with a very prominent, quite controversial, let's call them a journalist for the sake of argument, <laughs> um, decided, okay, I'm going to make some disparaging remarks about cosplays without doing any research, without actually asking what cosplay is, or why we do it, or anything, just went, Oh, look at them, they look really rubbish. Let's ridicule these random women I've just found on the internet. Which isn't particularly great. So I've had to end up covering that. Um, and the other thing is that it's not even just over here. In America, there's a, more, there's a show which... Unfortunately, I'm a massive geopolitical geopolitic, like junkie. I have to know everything that's going on around the world. In America, they have this morning show on one of the networks. And unfortunately, they decided when an attack happened on an... Uh, in a Chicago event, uh, there was like a gas attack or something, and a lot of people ended up having to go to hospital. And rather than covering it, you know, in the way of saying, oh, I hope these people are okay, and all the rest of it, they just went, ha, furries, ha, 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 and actually spent the time on air, live, laughing. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, um, you know, some people have some very interesting sense of humour, but I don't think they'd be too happy if it was people 
like them, for example, if it was a bunch of Christians who went in and they had were the victims, you know, unfortunately, victims of terrorism, I don't think they'd be laughing. And yet, you know, not a lot of repercussions happen. And I thought, well, someone has to say something. Someone has to do something positive and constructive. And for whatever reason, I said I had to do it. So I did actually a very interesting experiment. Before I turned up here, knowing I had to do this talk, I decided I'm going to find out <clears throat> what the public think of cosplay, what words, specific words, they associate with cosplay. So I got some of my friends who are not just cosplayers, but other non-cosplaying friends, I even got my family in on this, just to ask, what words do you associate with cosplay? Um, so basically, the top five words were fun, awesome, I like that one a lot, I thought that was great, <laughs> nerd, fair enough, determined, as one person put it, it must take, you know, I don't understand it, but it must take a lot of determination and hard work to get a costume together, and interesting. They might not understand it, but hey, at least they can appreciate the hobby for what it actually is. In contrast, I decided to go through the past six months of coverage on cosplay in the mainstream media. I restricted it to paper, you know, to internet and newspaper because if I went with TV and radio, I think I would have lost my mind. <laughs> I have no idea how long spending an entire weekend in your bedroom just covered in articles for people who you wonder how they passed journalism in school is a little infuriating. <laughs> so these were the top five words that the most commonly used words in some of these newspapers, again, will not be named for libel reasons. Sexy. Nerd. Okay, one word in common. Skimpy. That really annoyed me after a while. It was just constant, you know, it was almost like they couldn't quite understand that there's more than one word than skimpy. Tight and flesh. So just think about that. There's a giant contrast between what the public sees cosplay as, how we see it, how as not just cosplayers, but people who don't cosplay, but just you know, go to cons, or don't even go, they just see stuff that their friends are doing or whatever, and what the media seems to be pushing. It's, it's not very, it's, there's two complete different, you know, it's polar opposites, it's almost like, it's almost like someone said, okay, go describe that pile of wood. Someone said it's a pile of wood, and someone went, oh, it's magical elves and pixies. It would just, it's just like, hang on, that doesn't, what? <laughs> it's very, very strange. Now, this is the thing, I talk about standards and say, you know, well, this is ludicrous, but then you might be thinking, well, who the hell are you? You're not exactly a big time writer, I'm not a big time writer, fine, I'll admit that. And you might not want to take me seriously, fine. Th this is the thing though, at my website, we're very new, we're very, you know, so we're sort of setting off now. But I, with Geek, have an incredibly high standards. I've actually got a statement from my creative editor, who was actually quite sad he couldn't turn up. He did want to come down, but couldn't come down. I've got a statement. It says, um, just to show what kind of standards we expect, and maybe this is something we should be expecting of coverage of these events. It should go without saying, but our writers are held to the highest standards, not only in the name of professionalism, but more so based on this old-fashioned notion of actually being a good person. Anyone who takes part in what is, let's be honest, bullying, whilst claiming to represent I'm with Geek is simply not welcome in our little family. We only look for three things when we're looking at new writers. An ounce of talent, which you can learn the rest of it. A passion for sharing your work and dedication to the craft. If you can tick those boxes, then welcome aboard. Otherwise, please leave the room. And that's the thing, that that's a website that's been set up by volunteers. This is, you know, I don't get paid to do this. I do this because I love cosplay and I love films. I love dressing up. I love hanging out with my friends. This is something out of passion. If I can still take the time to do the research, why not paid journalists who are paid and have a reputation for knowing things and reporting the truth could do the same for cosplayers? It just seems a little bit bizarre, I'm not going to lie. But... I say a lot of this negative stuff, and it's not all negative. There are some very good people who will cover cosplay immaculately. Actually, it was interesting. The, Gu um, the Guardian did one such piece. I'll recommend you go watch it. You go see it, actually. It's a really good read. Basically defending and saying, you know, how can you pick on someone like that? You know, sort of being surprised. Like, oh, wait, they have a voice? They get irate? Ooh, okay. 
So that was quite interesting because they were like, you know, they're just people, don't pick on them, you know, if you're going to represent, represent things properly, which I quite enjoyed. But obviously there are, you know, we, we have this issue, that's fine, but what can we do? What can we do as people to keep ourselves, you know, what can we as cosplayers do to keep ourselves safe, to avoid taking pictures just randomly and then find ourselves somewhere we don't want to be? And what can people do, on my perspective, meet people like me who are writers, you know, reporters, what can we do to make sure that this stuff just becomes a thing of the past? There are a few things that we can do. We can ask questions. If I approach any of you and say, I would like to do an interview with you, I want to know more about your costume. If you said to me, oh, who are you and who are you representing? I'm going to have no problem answering you because I have honest intentions. If someone's being evasive and they're asking you, like, oh no, no, I just want to talk to you about it. No, you need to, they need to be upfront. If someone's not being upfront, then maybe it's a, you just think, no, I'm sorry. I need to know what's, where my picture is going to go, where my image and my, where I'm going to go with what I'm telling you. Where is it going? Where's that information going? And the same goes for fellow writers. If you want to be a writer, you need to be able to ask questions to people and be prepared to answer back. It's not just you give the questions, you receive the answers. It's a, give, it's a complete two-way system. And that's something to always remember. As I said, give information. That's, that's incredibly important. But also, do your research. So, if someone approaches you, say, say if you've got a cosplay page like myself, you can find me on Drew at Cosplay. If someone's got a page, and you know my, myself and I get someone going I'm from I don't know the daily squabble that's for example and I want to do an interview with you the first thing I'm going to do is look into that paper if I don't already know who they are I'm going to look into it see what kind of thing they're going to do because at the end of the day if you can arm yourself with information that is the absolute best thing that any of you can do be informed look into things don't just accept them for what they are look deeper and the same with writers if you're going to go to a con, if you're going to go to a comic con, if you're going to go to a meet up with cosplayers, anything to do with cosplay, do your research. Don't just go, oh, look, um, oh, there's this girl, I guess she looks attractive. Ping, there we go, that's my, that's my report. That's not good enough. You need to actually look into what it actually is. Don't just talk to, you know, people that you think are pretty and just leave it at that. You know, don't be subjective, be objective, be open to the possibilities. It's one of the best things you can do. And be honest. One of the most refreshing things I think most writers and most people will find is if you're honest. If you, I mean, say for example, if someone came up from um, a tabloid and said, "Well, we just want to co, you know, we want to profile, you know, beautiful cosplayers," like it is, I'm going to say, "Okay, fair enough. Thank you for letting me know, but I actually don't want to do that because I don't think that really represents it properly." Fair enough. At least then I know their intention and I'll give them credit for being honest. You know, it's the same as, say, you know, it's just, it's just common sense. A lot of this is complete common sense, and yet, you know, and yet not everyone already knows that. It's kind of strange. And this is the thing, just be careful. If something's too good to be true, more likely than not, it is. Completely too good to be true. And it's a shame, but, you know, you have to be careful. But also, you know, there's also the element of, you know, to stick to the positive side of it, because I like ending on positive notes, of just enjoying yourself anyway. I think when you come across um, a paper or a TV show or a radio station or whatever that represents something that you love in the incorrect way, in a way that is offensive, rather than just sharing their stuff and giving them the traffic they want and going, ah, crumbs, look at this, oh my god, They've done it again, they've done it again. Um, which you're perfectly allowed to do, but I think also combat it with positive. So say if someone's done a, a feedback or a critique of that particular article, share that instead. Just say, well look, someone stood up. This is a positive thing. Share all the positive, because that's one of the things with negativity, the best way to fight it is a positive angle. Because, in a way, that's what a lot of people want is the next side of it. If you go, oh, actually, I'm going to focus on these people instead and not give you my attention, not give you my money, not give you my time, they're going to lose their influence. Either they're going to lose it and go, oh, we need to improve, and it will force you know, a bit of a kick. Or they'll fade away into obscurity and not learn and just go.
could be done. And this is the thing I also wanted to add. We are always looking for writers as well. Um, I'm With Geek is a collective of writers who really enjoy um, embracing new talent, creative talent that otherwise wouldn't get a voice. We are currently looking for writers. Is there any budding writers here in the audience? Feel free to come up to me later after the talk. Uh, feel free to check out our website. It is www.imwithgeek.com. No apostrophes or anything like that. Um, you can check it out. You can email our editor as well, which will be the details are on the website. We I mean, are constantly looking for new talent. I might be sort of I'm the one cosplay writer at the moment, but we might want two. We might want three. We want like, like an entire team. Who knows? But yeah, it's certainly worth it. So I think, and that's something that's really afforded me a lot of opportunity. It's what's gotten me here now, is that opportunity to be able to speak out and to be vocal. It's great. And it means I get to represent a community I love to pieces. And yeah, that's actually pretty fun. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to say. Does anyone have any questions, any comments, any sort of anything whatsoever that they want to ask? Or anything they want clarifying? Because sometimes I know I speak a little too fast sometimes. So if anyone wants anything clarifying or wants any sort of question or anything of the sort. So anything anyone wants to ask? You're really actually quite an easy audience. I don't have a ton of questions, you know. It's great. Um, so yeah, like I said, after this talk, if you want to come up to me and ask me any questions in private, I know getting up in front of an audience can be a little bit daunting, so I completely understand if you don't want to come up to me in public. Um, feel free to um, check out my um, my Facebook page. It's Druid Cosplay, and that's with an E. There's no eyes in it. <laughs> a lot of people go, oh, it's I T T. So, yeah, it's a case of, again, just to sort of sum up, be aware, but also be, be aware of the positive and the negative side of it. Be savvy when it comes to media, because whilst a lot of people like myself and there are other journalists who, are, who I've come across today, and they're fantastic, by the way, definitely go have a chat. They're great, and they'll be honest with their intentions, but there are some that might not be, so just always be mindful. But don't be too paranoid. Anyway, if there are any questions, I'll be hanging around for a bit afterwards. Um, I've probably made this quite short, but oh well, probably good to be short and sweet, not drag on too much. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you just sit, sticking around. It's quite a lot of you, so happy about that. Have a really good day. Check out the rest of it. I think there's going to be a talk in the next few minutes or so from, I can't remember who. There's going to be a talk soon, and then it'll be towards the end of the day. So do have a lovely day, guys. <laughs>